What makes this question a little tricky for a lot of grade 12s is that I know a lot of you have forgotten your formulas for uh, for the volume and surface area of shapes like this, like a cone. I personally feel that they should give you these formulas in the exams. This isn't like the 15th century because in real life you have access to these formulas. Okay, and I know there's a lot of you who are agreeing with me right now. So unfortunately, they well, most times they don't give you the formulas for these types of shapes. So in this question, they say determine. So, so what I would actually recommend before we carry on is that you guys just take 30 minutes, go find the formulas, write them down, put them on your wall and just learn them. I promise you, it's really easy. Like I can remember every single one of them, not because I'm some like genius or something, but because I've just forced myself to learn it back when I was in school and I've just never forgotten it. So you might as well just do it, get done with it. So. They say here, determine the value of H which makes the volume of the cone a maximum. So we need to find the volume of this cone. Now a volume of a cone, I'll give you guys a little a hint. It's the same as a cylinder's volume, okay? So if we had a little cylinder here, a cylinder would be area of base, which is a circle, so that's pi r squared, times by the height. Then when you've got a pyramid type shape like this, you take the original cylinder and you just divide that by three. And that's where your teacher might have showed you that the volume of a cone is a third pi r squared times height. Mathematically, what they're actually trying to say is that the volume of a cone will always be the th a third of the volume of a cylinder with the same radius. Quite cool, hey? Well, the same radius and the same height, of course. And so if we look at this, the only problem we can see is that there are two variables. There's r and h. People often say, Kevin, what about pi? Guys, pi isn't a variable. Pi is a solid number, like 3.14. It's not something that can change. So we can actually just think of pi as a normal number. So the only problem we have is that there's an r and there's an h. So we need to replace one of those using extra information. So luckily they've given us this. They've told us that the sum of the radius and the height is 14. That literally means that h plus r must be 14. Sometimes people multiply them, but guys, sum means plus. Now, usually in the exam, they'll guide you on which one to get by itself. But look here, they say determine the value of h. So at the end, they would like us to have h. So we don't have to get h alone first. We could get r and then find h later. But if you want to find h immediately, then what you should do is get r alone here. So r would be 14 minus h. And then you go put that r, you replace it over there. So then your formula will only have h's in it. So volume of the cone is going to be a third pi. Then the radius is going to be 14 minus h squared times height. Look at that. We've now replaced the r with h. And so now we need to neaten this up. So volume cone is going to be a third pi. I'm going to drag this h to the front. Just looks a little bit better. And then 14 minus h. I'm going to put that into two brackets. Be careful never to just say 14 squared and h squared. I see that mistake quite a lot. And so now we can just multiply, simplify. So volume cone is going to be third pi h. And I'm just going to multiply these two together, these two brackets. So that's going to be 196 minus 28h plus h squared. We're then going to multiply the third pi h into that. So here's a little hint, guys. A third pi, you can type that in on your calculator as it is. So just say a third pi and then just say times by 196 and that's okay that's just going to give you 196 over 3 pi and then obviously there's this h so you just do that you don't want to work with all these weird decimals right now and then you can just say minus and then it's 28 times a third pi you can type that in on the calculator and that's just going to give us 28 over 3 pi h and then the last one will just give us a third pi h cubed okay now remember, to find minimums and maximums, we always just take the first derivative and we make it equal to zero. So we're trying to find the maximum volume. So we use the volume equation, which is the one we just found, and we take the first derivative and we make it equal to zero. Now, pi, guys, just think of that as a normal number. Pi is not going to do anything weird. So your volume of your cone is just going to be 196 over 3 pi because that h falls away. It's like taking the derivative of 5x, it's just going to be 5. And then that's 
oh, this is meant to be an h squared. Maybe some of you saw that. My bad. And so that, okay, so what happens here is that this 2 is just going to multiply by 28 over 3 pi. So you can literally type in 2 times 28 over 3 pi on your calculator. Let the calculator do all the difficult stuff. And that's just going to give you 56 over 3 pi h. There will be still be an h left over. And then this will just be 3 multiplied by a third pi, which is just going to give you pi. And then there will still be an h squared. There we go. Now, oh, and that's the first derivative, so I should put a little line there. Okay, now we know that to find minimums and maximums, it's the first derivative equal to zero. So I'm just going to put a zero. Okay, now if you see, there's a pi in all three terms. And so we can actually just divide by pi, because it's just annoying that <laughs> pi is always a bit of an awkward thing. So you just get rid of that. And so now what we have is zero, and I'm just going to put the h squared in the front. Then we've got 56 over 3h, and then we've got 196 over 3. Now here is a quadratic, so you could, if you wanted to, plug this directly into the formula. I wouldn't use decimals because you lose a lot of your accuracy. I would keep it as 56 over 3, 196 over 3, and h. If you wanted to, though, you could get a you could get rid of the denominators by timesing everything by 3. So it'll be 0 equals to 3h squared minus 56h plus 196. Okay, so we can do that when you've got a zero on the other side like that. Or you could have, as I said, just taken the quadratic formula from that original step. Now what we do is we use the quadratic formula. Oh, it actually works out quite nice. H is 14 or H is going to be 4.67. Now it might be difficult to know which one's correct, but H cannot be 14. Why do I say that? The reason I say that is that in the beginning here, we said that the height plus the radius must be 14. So if the height is already 14, then the radius would be 0. And so think of a, sh think of a cone with a 0 radius. Well, that's just going to be a straight line, so that doesn't really make sense. That would have 0 volume. So that's probably the minimum, but what we want is the maximum. And so h is going to be 4.67.